Alright, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers, so make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man, he gonna hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons, but man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next, and let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace. All right, y'all, let's talk about Jeff Okuda. He took shots at Matt Patricia and his old staff. And praise your guy, Dan Campbell. So let's get to it. And regime, appreciate the love and support. Just keep sharing the videos. Best way you can donate to the channel. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app is CJ313. That's in the description. PayPal links in the description as well. So let's take his quote. I think I don't NFL.com. I got a lot of them. But Jeff Okuda, Lions cornerback. Feeling great after surgery, poison. No, excuse me, wrong article. Okay. Give me a minute. To Jeff Okuda, grateful for new defensive coaches, Glenn. Pleasant after year under Patricia. Let's get to it. Hold on, I gotta make sure you mute this stuff. Playing all types of stuff. They showing the Lions and Cardinals game. Like I said, that's uh that's old boy. That's a, that's a, um, July's best game. Let's say Detroit Lions corner Jeff Okuda labored through a dreadful rookie season, struggling to cover a dozen by <laughs> battling injury. The consistent top corner last year's draft looked lost on the field. And former coach Matt Patricia defense, having already met Lions defensive uh, new defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn and DB coach RB Pleasant, Okuda told reporters Thursday that he's learning things to help help get him back on the right path. Quote: Just sitting down with them with the couple with the first couple meetings. Um, I was picking up so much things that I thought to myself, like, Ooh, it would have been, just been nice. I'm not sure why I was just so mean. It, excuse me, I lost my place. He over here growling. Excuse me. It would have been nice uh, to have these tools in my rookie, in my toolbox into my rookie year. Kuda via Dave Burkett, the Detroit Precast. Um, I'm still grateful to have them going into the second year. And I think it's only been two or three months and we still have all the work to do. It was just, it was, has me excited how much more there is to learn, and how much better there is to get the leading to up to the season. Um, new season. Um, sorry. You got to make sure the dogs don't nip on the big dogs and big dog get mad and, you know, got to make sure. So sorry, y'all. 22 year old corner was selected number three overall last year's uh, with the brief, he owned the speed and the ball skills to become immediate starter. Instead, Jeff Okuda fell on his face in the year one. Pro Football Focus graded him, uh, graded him as his last ranked cornerback in terms of coverage. Among 136 with 22 snaps last year in nine games, he compiled two pass defenses, one pick, to go along with 47 tackles. Jeff Okuda allowed 75% completion percentage against him last season. In the final three games, the cornerback allowed all 12 targets his way to be completed. As a rookie, part of as a rookie, part of struggle stems from groin injury that eventually ended his season. Okuda underwent, underwent groin surgery in December. He said he's definitely trending towards 100% as an off-season workouts approach. "Quote: I just feel like I have a different level that I wasn't able to kind of trap into last year." Okuda said, "But I feel like this year is just kind of moving around now and not having the pain in my groin anymore. It just feels like a different level. So I'm excited. Get with Pleasant." craft up and see what it turns turns out to be excuse me but yeah i mean at the end of the day man you know if the groin was the problem that's just, that's the actual factual that's not an excuse i mean we'll see but obviously there was no preseason no real joint practices so it really you know that hurt a lot of people you know aj Terrell party had the best rookie that i can remember whatever season there's another kid was it uh the kid that went to jacksonville last year you know he struggled with some uh stuff as well too let me look up the 2020 NFL draft and uh I think we gotta pull it up. Oh the Red D. So, you know, out of the guys that played last year that won the first round, you look, Joe Burrows, he did his thing to his injury. Chase Young was, was defensive rookie of the year. Great, great thing great about him. Jeff Okuda, okay. But Andrew Thomas, Tua, uh you heard how Brill Her uh, Herbert did. Brown, Simmons, CJ Henderson was his name. Uh Jeff uh Jadrick, uh Wilson, you know, we don't hear much about the tackles. Henry Ruggs, a lot of guys didn't have a great year. You know, really, who had the best year was Chase 
Young and um, Tristan Wirtz and Henry Henry Erickson have a great year. Didn't hear much for Javon Kinlaw. Um, AJ Terrell was okay. Jerry Judy didn't have a great year. You know, Judy almost had a thousand yards. They had a quarterback. He probably would have had it. Um, you know, a lot of guys. Jalen Rieger didn't have a good year. Um, Justin Jefferson had a, you know, he right up there with them. Brandon Ayuk had a great year, but not everybody was going to make that adjustment quick. The worst was probably Isaiah Wilson with him probably being out the league for good now. That's the situation with uh, Tampa Bay, but, excuse me, Tennessee Titans. But, um, I mean, you know, you look, it is what it is. You know, we know corners take a long time to develop. And even, even if he don't develop this year and Quinn Dunbar step in or whoever step in and do their thing, excuse me, I'm actually itching. Um, whoever, you know, whoever step in, I'm not, I'm still thinking of him a year behind. Think about it. It's already hard to play corner with regular all season OTAs and stuff. So he didn't have that, had the injury. Really, it's like his rookie year this year. And Mario Rari missed his whole rookie year. And he, his second year, he hit the ground running. So, you know, this year, I think he should hit the ground running healthy, you know, um, and doing his thing. But uh, it's going to take some time. You know, everybody, you know, was acting like he was going to come in. And most of y'all was acting like he was going to come in and be the Don Dada, come in to be Revis in his prime. And I told y'all, that wasn't going to be the case. Nobody listened, you know. Told y'all we need to take the quarterback, Herbert, or Tua. But, like I said before, corner wasn't going to change your life. Cornerbacks don't even have that big of an impact on the field, honestly. They could take one person away on one side of the field away. You got a whole other side, middle, the other side, left or right. So, like I told people, you know, they don't know nothing about football. It, it takes time. You know, with cornerback, if you want immediate impact, you should want a receiver or a quarterback for now. But, you know, most people don't understand football. I've been watching it long enough. To understand football, and it, it takes some time to play cornerback. Revis didn't hit the uh, ground running. You know, a lot of guys did hit the ground running, Marcus Peters and Marshawn Lattimore, but it takes time, you know. And for him, it's about technique. Arari missed his whole year and played kind of towards the end. Next year, he got bigger, stronger, knew what to uh, expect. You know, really was one of the better corners in the league last year, probably on the back half of that, but it takes time. You know, Michael Pittman missed some time last year. A few rookies, you know, hit some, missed some time, and then, you know, this year, I expect, I expect for them to hit the ground running, you know. But most people don't understand football. You know, we're talking about bringing a cornerback at number three. Deion wasn't great his first year. He was more of a retired man. But year two, three is going to pay off. And for Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, they're not going to reap that benefit. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but, uh, you know, it would seem like it'd be a, it was a disconnect between those two. When you're talking about Jeff Okuda, Matt Patricia knew he wasn't ready to start. Bob Quinn sounded like he wanted him in there. It didn't work. And ultimately, if you look back, Justin Herbert was the pick, to be honest. You know, to be honest, I mean, other guys, you, you, you they probably would have entertained or moved, if they could have moved down or breached for Tristan Werbs. You know, really, really, if you're talking about, you know, players that could have had an impact, you know, if you wanted to sit sit down and marinate them, it was probably Isaiah Simmons. You know, honestly, uh, you know, it was Isaiah Simmons. It's probably the guy you probably really wanted to marinate, but... Who knows? Jeff Okuda might end up being the best corner in the league, you know? So, I think it's going to end up paying off dividends. You got two. You got all long corners other than Corn Elder. You got Afon who came in this draft. Arari, Ye, Jeff Okuda, Quinn Dunbar, who learned the position, who switched the position in the league. So, you know, obviously, it's a lot of uh, good players. And his boy, Darnett, uh, Damon Arnett, the other corner from Ohio State, didn't do nothing either. So, really, this is his true rookie season. You know, even though it's still not a true rookie season, why well, I say that is simply because... Uh, Excuse me. I say that simply because, uh, cause you know he don't have the preseason and stuff with the joint practice probably this year. But you know it is what it is, man. And I think Jeff Okuda is going to be a superior uh, cornerback in this year. I still believe in him. I still didn't like the pick last year, um, but then again, now I may pay off this year, next year. But the biggest, you know, the biggest thing for him is not letting his confidence get hurt. And if, if a way of not letting his confidence get hurt. If it's, you know, telling himself it was an injury, okay, cool. You know, tell himself it wasn't, it was an injury. So his confidence is still high, you know. One thing you don't want happening to him and not having the confidence. That's the biggest thing about corner, confidence. When they playing confident, you know, you get, you get better reaction time and all that other stuff. And that's just what it is, confidence. Confidence. It's, it's, it's a cornerback position. You know, if you don't have no confidence playing cornerback, you know, you might as well not be in the league. You know, if you're not, a, you don't have swagger confidence. All the great cornerbacks got swagger confidence. Daryl Green, Darrell Rivas, Champ Bailey, Deion Sanders, 
you know, even if it was for a minute, Tyron, I mean, uh, Ty Law, you know, the court, the position is about, it's about, it's about, you know, other than athletic stuff, it's about confidence, swagger, and it's just, you know, just playing with those two. If you got the speed, the height, the length, and, the, you know, you feisty, and, the, and of course he can tackle, he, they said he had what? How many tackles he had last year? I don't want to lie. Mm. Hold on. 47 tackles, so. Most people want to say, oh, switch him to safety, switch him to safety. You know, for what? He not, he not, he not, why would you switch him to safety and he could be a great corner because of one year? He looked really, really bad out there. No pass rush. No exotic, just you playing one-on-one. Imagine going outside with your kid, get your kid the football. And say go one-on-one. And you just got to cover him across a large area of space. You're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're not in shape. So that's what it's like. You be able to go out there and play one on one, you know, the receiver versus corner, and with no help over the top, he could do whatever he want to do without without no one Mississippi, without somebody blitzing. That that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to play cornerback in this league. You can't took away the stick him. You can't jam him past five yards. You know what I'm saying? You can't hold him down the field. It, it's it's impossible. You know, and when you add that in with Matt Patricia not having no 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 uh no strong characteristics in the defense where they, you know, stunting and, you know, looping and, you know, showing blitz and billing out and blitzing. And of course, you get no pressure. What do you going to think? If you say you're giving the best front seven in the, in the league, Jeff Okuda will probably be the rookie of the year. <laughs> Jeff Okuda will be rookie of the year because guess what? He ain't got a cover but for three or four or five Mississippis. You know, he probably have ten picks, you know. The front seven would make make the back end. The Eagles one with the back, the back end. That wasn't shit. Everybody was injured at corner. So corner don't have much importance, even in today. If your front end is the shit, you know what I'm saying? You know, your back end could be at ordinary or below, slightly below average. You know, that's just my opinion on it. But uh, but yeah, he took shots at Matt Patricia. We know what it was, it's facts, and you know, if that's any indication of what the defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a huge upgrade next year. But then when you put him in those situations, when the fire hit the pan and calling the plays and having to make the adjustment, he's going to go through a maturation process. Only person that's not going to really go through that process as far as the coordinators and head coaches is going to be Anthony Lynn because he's been there, done that before. Dan Campbell going to have to learn how to manage the game. Aaron Glenn going to have to know how to – and he's been through that. It's going As a play caller, don't expect platinum standards from everybody. Getting to know the players, getting the feel for the players, but, you know, it should be interesting. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All my social media links description. Fast Reach me is Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram. All the links there. If you want to make a financial donation? Cash App CJ Good313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. That's for the donate, share, share video. Don't forget to check out the channel while right here on YouTube, Goodfellow Sports TV. More sports news and entertainment. Peace.